you ever wanted to take beautiful nature photographs but didn't want to get out in the cold, well, today's video is going to be basically about how you would dress and layer properly to survive the elements and take those amazing winter time shots. So without further ado, let's get started. So the name of the game with uh, dressing and layering really for winter time uh, hiking and photography is that you want to dress in layers and you want to do it very, very smart. Um, I'm going to just say off right off the bat is that you don't want to use cotton clothing. Uh, cotton really retains sweat and cold and that's not what you want obviously when it's frigid single digit temperatures outside. So I'm just going to recommend that you just don't use cotton at all. It's going to be a much more, save you much more pain down the road I think and just discomfort overall. Um, and rather I'd recommend that you use uh, something similar like a poly, polyester blend or a tri-blend or uh, something like wool. Uh, Marinol wool is very good. Um, it could be a little expensive, um, so if you're not in that budget, I would definitely recommend something that's more like athletic wear, like tech shirts or polyester, or something similar along that lines, or a mixture of both. Um, some shirts and clothing actually have uh, both wool and polyester uh, mixed in, so those work as well um, for just getting outdoors and getting really kind of sweaty and cold, you know, as it, but it also retains the warmth as well during this time of year, um, so that's really important as well. Um, so your first, basically your first layer is going to be your base layer, at least on your torso. And that's going to be something that's a long sleeve polyester shirt. Um, something similar to this um, works out pretty well, or just a short sleeve. But like I said, in winter, I would recommend a long sleeve uh, shirt like that. Maybe it kind of wraps around your neck a little bit more, and it might be a thicker kind of uh, polyester, I guess, uh, you know, density to the shirt itself. Um, I'm going to recommend that specifically. Um, and then your second layer is going to be typically something like a fleece jacket. Um, it's going to be something that's just, you know, a quarter sleeve or a half sleeve uh, zippered. And it should be able, if you zip all the way up, keep it all the way wrapped around your neck to provide that warmth if you're not wearing something like a buff or a scarf. Um, so that's something else I'd recommend. And then your outer layer is going to be something that's much more, uh, it's going to be something that's like a down jacket, which is, you know, filled with down, which is essentially feathers. And this is something that's going to be very lightweight. Um, and it's going to be something that you can easily pack into a hiking bag or a camera bag. Uh, something very, very small, um, but it still provides lots and lots of warmth. And it's also important because it can help you dress down later in the day. Like, let's say it's a sunny but snowy and cold day, um, but the sun comes out and it just becomes much more warmer and you want to dress down because you're starting to sweat some more. Um, if you do that quick enough um, without getting, you know, the cold sweats, then you can pack down these down jackets simply into your bag like so. Um, this one actually comes with a stuffable pocket, like an inner pocket that you can put it in um, that helps out real well. And these are great because they retain the warmth. You can get ones without hoods or without um, that work out pretty well in all different kinds of you know, sizes and colors and also the, the density and the thickness of the down itself. Um, these are about 650 I believe. You can get ones up to 800. Um, I believe even a thousand, obviously. So basically the higher the number of the down or the fill that is used in these jackets means that, you know, it's going to be, it's going to retain more warmth. Um, so, you know, you want to get a jacket that can really um, pare down to your, your climate and your region. Um, so I'm here in Ohio, so it's not really that much cold um, compared to up, you know, way up north and all that, or down, way down deep south of like Antarctica or something. So, but um, these jackets work out really well and they're great pretty much for those warm and mild kind of winter days. Um, so these work out really well, and then I recommend a uh, base layer for your, your legs, basically, is something that's going to be much more like a, um, kind of like a long johns, something that's also going to be a polyester or wool blend. Um, these are just like some running long sleeve uh, compression pants, and so these are really tight and close to the body. Um, I recommend, and I'd emphasize that using clothes that are very tight and close to the body help, helps to uh, retain that warmth, and that's going to be very important. Um, obviously when you're hiking and everything to keep that sweat really close by and to just keep warm simply while you're out hiking and uh, taking photographs. And then uh, from there I just usually do some kind of hiking cargo shorts. These are ones that have a convertible into a short, basically make shorts out of them. Obviously in the winter I, I don't really use that feature as much, um, but these are nice because they're in like a nylon polyester blend. Um, mainly, mainly pants are made of nylon. Um, and these work out just as well for that. And they have many pockets and obviously, and yeah, wear those out hiking. But that, that base layer underneath is very important, I think, um, to keeping the warmth. If you just had this single layer, then you're just gonna be very cold, no matter how much you're moving your feet. Um, so that's gonna be a very important thing, I think, is to just get two or three layers in each part of your body, essentially. And then so from there, I have my hats, really, I guess we'll go with the hats next. 
um, something that's much more like an acrylic or some kind of wool hat. And then this base hat is essentially a, it's much more thinner, it's like a skull cap basically. And this one's made of entirely of wool. Um, it's very, very small, lightweight. You can literally fit it in your pocket and it just retains a warmth on its own. This, this outer layer hat um, is just kind of like extra, I guess, because you know most of your heat escapes from your top of your head. So it's really important that you keep the, a layer or two for the really, really cold days um, when you're out hiking and such. And then so for there, pretty much you got your gloves. Um, these are ones that you know have convertible uh, exposed fingertips um, for when you're using the shutter buttons and such. If you don't need those and you're just hiking, then I'd recommend something like this that's like more like a mitten and it has a flap and it just has fingerless, um, it's basically a fingerless glove at that point. Um, and so those work as well. These are made of like a nice wool uh, blend, so that's really nice. Or just something that's a little bit thinner. These are like touchscreen gloves, essentially. And then from there, if you want to protect your uh, your neck area and kind of the back of your head, you use something that's like a nice uh, merino wool scarf or something that's like cashmere or something. Just a scarf that you know kind of protects that whole area or something that's more like a uh, ski mask or neck buff. Um, that would work pretty well as well. And then uh, to keep your hands warm, just a little extra layer of protection, um, I'd recommend these disposable hand warmers. These are very cheap and affordable and they last for pretty much a full day if you're out hiking or photography. Um, if you don't want to you know, spend money on getting a whole bunch of those in bulk, you could always get one of these uh, reusable. Uh, it just ba basically takes fuel and it's a Zippo uh, lighter that is a hand warmer. So it's reusable and it does works out all the same. So it's just a big old one. And you can keep that on your person and reuse it for many years hopefully. And it comes with a re little refillable tank as well. And then so for that, um, I have some heavy dense wool socks that I keep on me pretty much all times, you know, in the winter at least. And then uh, hiking boots that have good traction. And then you can also get something that might be like snowshoes or snow tracks. They are like crampons they can put onto these boots just to provide the extra layer and um, also to help with traction, I guess. If you're on really icy terrain, um, that would be a really important tool to have, I think, for um, what you wear, essentially. So that's pretty much it for this overall. Um, it's just really important to emphasize, you know, dress in layers and uh, just dress smart about how you want to get out there and hike. Um, so if you have any questions um, and if you like the video, please like it. Um, check out my website, www.ryanltaylor.com, where I post and I publish my nature photography. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this little informational video and to stay around for subscribing to my other videos. So thanks so much and have a good day.